Hi everyone, Sean Barton here from Tortoise IT. Um, this is intended as a walkthrough video to show you um, how to use the Woo Layout Injector plugin from scratch to show you what Divi is like without um, this plugin and with it, but also to include factors that I've just integrated into version 4 of the plugin released, well, minutes ago actually. Uh, so without further ado, let's pop straight in. Um, so let's go and have a look at our shop. Now my example site has got four products um, and it's all pretty basic information in there. So that's what you get normally, sidebar, shop, um, and we'll go and have a look at uh, the product page. There you go, product images. I've added loads to this one, just an example. A couple of variations, price, etc. We've got tabs at the bottom and the sidebar again. Um, and we can add to a cart, but I've already got some stuff in my cart, so I'll go straight to my cart in the top, top corner here. You get this little cart icon when um, WooCommerce is activated, and that's pretty much all it does. Uh, there's my cart, so I've got a variable product in the cart here and a couple of normal products. Um, you get a cart itself and then the totals below with shipping calculator there. Proceed to checkout button, and you'll see the uh, billing, this is the checkout page, so no header or anything, billing, billing information, shipping information there if you wanted it, um, a little mini cart there telling you what you're about to buy and how much for, and a proceed to PayPal or any other gateway button. Um, the My Account pages are also pretty bland. Uh, you'll see here that's what you get. Um, so you can see your orders. There you go, and you click through and have a look at them. Downloads, addresses, etc., etc. It's all pretty dull, but there you go, that's what you get. Um, so let's go and activate the Woo Layout Injector plugin. Um, this is actually the second time I've recorded this video because when I went to go to the settings page, I left my, um, <laughs> I left my license key in there. <laughs> and um, obviously, I didn't really want to publish that to the world, so here we go again, 10 minutes into a video. Uh, right, I need to find my Woo Layout Injector plugin. It's right at the bottom, just above WooCommerce, actually. There you go. Typically, my test site has got loads of plugins here. 92. None are active, though, thankfully. Right, within WooCommerce, you'll see Woo Layout Injector here. Uh, you'll see a license box at the top. The plugin will function without the license box, except you won't get any auto update functionality. So you won't be alerted to updates and you won't be given the opportunity to update from within the plugin. So put your license key in there. It's license for life at the moment. Um, so we don't license on a per site basis or on a period of time. So basically once you've bought it, it's yours. So put it in there and press go and that's what you've got to do. Now the settings below, I'll just explain some of these as I go down just to, for clarity's sake. I am assuming by the way that in watching this video, you have read the product page you know that the system will allow you to um, overwrite or create your own um, uh, your own WooCommerce pages using the Divi Builder um, on a library basis or on an individual basis, but I'll go into that in more detail further on in the video. So general settings, this is just sort of where I dump sort of various different settings and things that I've uh, kind of created over the uh, last year or so. Now, enable Divi Builder for WooCommerce products, I think it defaults to off. Um, but you'd have to turn it on just by checking the box and pressing save. Admin test mode is if you want to um, create a layout and um, uh, and test how it looks before you make it live. Um, I may remove that in the future because it, it's a bit redundant now, it's been there so long, but um, it's there if you want to use it at the moment. It probably will only work with the single product and the product archive functions. Header mini cart, we'll come back to that in a minute, but the picture of the cart that you get in the header is replaced with um, something a bit more, so that's that's an enable button there. Zoom feature, uh, well in WooCommerce I think 3.0 or 3.2 they um, added their own hover zoom functionality and it irritated some people and some people loved it. Um, those that irritate were irritated by it um, or stuck with it, or you can add some code to turn it off, but I've actually added a little checkbox there just to do the same thing. Cart cross-sell, um, if you do add cross-selling products um, on your site, then in the shopping cart area, it would have automatically put those next to um, 
uh, one of the boxes on there. So that's a way of turning it off if you didn't want that, if you wanted to make your own page, for instance. Um, add to cart button label. So um, mostly add to cart buttons say add to cart. But here in the UK, we often call these them shopping baskets. So you might have add to basket. So you just type into there what you want and save and it's done. Um, placeholder image URL is if you happen to be looking at a product page where um, there is no image, uh, rather than showing a placeholder or no image, that it would show where the URL you put in there. So um, I, I'd be using pictures of cats as, <laughs> as examples. So you may see a few cats around the side, but basically that's first what that's for. Sale badger, this is a new version four feature. Um, sale badges um, are typically a little text um, sort of uh, block um, on a coloured background that would say on sale that would uh, sort of position itself somewhere on the product page or the product archive page. That's like the shop page or the product category page. Um, and um, that has never really worked or actually been into integrated until now in the Woo Layout Injector plugin. And so I've just done that for you. You can choose where you'd like the um, the sale badge to show, whether it be over the product image, which I think actually looks the best, um, the product title, which it sort of pops itself over the corner in an offset, or the product description. And you may have to add some padding to make that really work properly, but either or, that's there. You can set it on an archive page or a single product page, um, however you like. Um, they default to off, I think, so it won't show them until you actually turn them on. Oh, excuse me, it's late here. I've been working all day on this. <laughs> the last 10 days, in fact. Um, here we go. Um, it's funny, I'm here talking and I've just, just had somebody tell me, I say erm an awful lot, and, and I do, don't I? I was about to say it again then. The sale badge location on archive pages and single product pages can be set discreetly. If you don't want them, just add none, just put, choose the none option. The sale badge label is if you want it to say on sale, which is the default, it'll say it. If you want it to say something else, I, in one of my Facebook examples, I put slightly cheaper as an example, and you type, you, you put it into that box and um, you don't have to, uh, there's no other settings anywhere else, you, you, you just fill in the box, press save, and you're done. So that works a treat. Further down the page, we have our, our the core functionality of the Woo Layout Injector plugin is the product page layout and the product archive pages, as I call them. You might understand them as the shop page, the product category um, archive or shop, um, product tags, and uh, very other different pages. Basically, an archive page is where you see a list of products or a grid of products together. So think about it as your storefront. So this product plugin has always allowed you to um, create a, a shop front in a grid or whatever. And to you, using the loop archive methodology that I've created, you can you effectively use one layout within another one. But I'll explain that in a minute. Product page layout is pretty clean cut. Um, you, you go and make a layout in the Divi Builder and you would assign that to be used from the product pages here. And I've got an example here example one, which I'll show you shortly. You can override these on a per category basis. So in my test one category, let's say I had 50 more. If I wanted products which sit within boots and shoes here to use one layout, that might be different to those which use the books. You know, category books might have a different layout. Allows you to showcase your products in different ways, so it's really, really useful. And in fact, I've described the same thing here in my little bit of information. Everything is set to none at the moment, which uh, shows you basically shows you with with nothing on. And I'm going to build up the pages as we go through this example. The shop page is much the same. Um, you can use the shop page. You select the one you want, and then these two would then follow suit. So if you choose default, I believe it, it um, from memory. <laughs> I've changed this quite a bit recently. Um, these two would. <coughs> um, it would use the Woo loop item one to see if I can just select the same one three times. I normally would though, just for clarity, you know, Woo loop item three times like this. Um, so you can see what's going on. Some people like to have a category archive page different to the main shop page, for instance. Category archives are commonly visited on a WooCommerce site, uh, much like the shop page itself, but tag archives perhaps not so much. 
you might want to make a feature more of your shop page, different banners and things, so that allows you to discreetly decide which one you want. Same again here, category tag overrides. So on category one, for instance, you might want to show one archive, but on category two, you might want to show another archive. So that's what that's designed for, but it will always fall back to up here if need be. These three here are version four additions, cart, checkout, and my account page layouts. So we'll start with uh, the cart. So there's two layouts here. So if you wanted to add uh, a layout to, excuse me, um, a layout to uh, create a basket page using the Divi Builder. Uh, there are modules, and I'll show you those shortly. Um, I think I've added 37 different modules. So you've got quite a few to choose from. Um, but for the cart page specifically, the two items that you need on the cart page are the cart totals and the cart, um, the, the cart table, I think. One showing you the list of things you've bought, another one showing you the, the, the mini uh, proceed to checkout button, etc. If there's more than one product, sorry, if there's one or more products in the cart, and if you have something in your cart, we want to see a traditional cart. So you create yourself a basket layout, for instance. If you don't have anything in the cart, we don't really want to show them an empty table or a message, just a one-liner saying, no thanks. Um, so I've given you the ability to create another layout entirely separate to the first one that allows you to create something a bit more markety. Uh, so I'll show you that, actually, my pre-made layouts, because it takes a little while to make all these different layouts if you really want to do it properly. And I've got loads of test data here, so I'll, I'll turn them all on and off and flip backwards and forwards shortly. Now the checkout page layout is one only. Uh, you can't visit the checkout page when you don't have anything in the cart. So when you go to the checkout page, WooCommerce will automatically push you back to the cart page or somewhere else if your cart is empty. So we're assuming now that something's in the cart, so we need to create uh, a layout that says billing address, shipping address, here's what you're buying and here's the button to pay. So there's four separate modules for that. Position them, style them, do what you want. Uh, it's, it's really kind of versatile. And my account page works in more or less the same way. The My Account page was, again, pretty bland. You saw a side navigation with uh, in a column with a the main content area showing you the uh, the content itself with things like my orders, my addresses, etc. Now, this will allow you to create a library layout, which will include two layout, two modules. One will be the uh, My Account page navigation module, which creates the links. And, you, and the reason it's a separate module is you can put it wherever you want, above, below, left, right. Now, typically it's on the left, but you can have a right if you wanted to. If you're going to create a similar layout to what's default, do it this way anyway, because then you can use the Divi Builder to style and to top and tail, add in your own text, that sort of thing. Um, the other major module that you need to add in here is the account page, I think I called it, but I will show you, um, which has... Um, drop downs for you to select layouts for the other pages for more styling options. Fairly new feature so it'll change a lot over the next few months or so but it is possible and it does work a treat so I'll come back to that. So let's show you the product page layout. Now we're going to create our single product page. If I open another tab here, see if I can get across. There we go. And we're we'll going to have a look at a product page. Now, if memory serves, it was pretty dull. There we go, pretty dull. Now, we'll go into the Divi Builder in the Divi Library. And we'll make a new layout, and I'll call it Video, if I can spell, Woo Single. And I'll make it as a layout and nothing else. Some people like to make them as sections, that's completely fine as well. The important thing is it's not global. So we press submit and we wait and it'll save it. Then we can create our layout using the Divi Builder. Now the first thing I'll do is I'll probably make a two column layout and there's, there's no sidebar. So the sidebar that we've got here on the right that's disappearing now, and we'll have a product image. So we'll scroll down in the Divi Builder, 
And what you'll see is a section with woo written in front of it, and those are all for the DivDiv layout, in, so the woo layout injector plugin. Now on this page here, you're going to want to add things like the... I won't go through every single one because they're all documented, but I will go through, let's say, where is it gone, the product image. There we go, woo product image. Now by default, you can choose what, what size your image is. I tend to choose large, but default is large, so that's fine. Hide thumbnails will, will allow you to use a different module if you wanted them separate, so we won't do that. Um, and then the thumbnail image size, um, we'll just leave as it is, everything is default. That's more for archives, and that's an overlay again, it's more for archives. So we'll just leave that as standard. In the right-hand column, we'll add ourselves a, here we go, a title which will leave default, but you can align it and change text color. We'll add the price in the price module. And again, we won't leave the title and we'll, we won't change the orientation, just leave that as it is. We'll add an add to cart, which is called add to cart. Title text orientation again. We'll add the description, which is content. Woo content, and that'll do us for now. Now you can add things like tabs and anything else on here. What I will also add, in fact, is a breadcrumb trail above. So a single column here. Now it's woo breadcrumbs, I believe. There, and I will also add woo notices. Now, woo notices is when you add something to your cart, you get the blue bar at the top that says. Product one has been added to your cart. If you don't add this module, then don't worry. Um, it will show them the message, but it will be right at the top of the page below the menu. So you'll see the menu, the blue bar, and then your layout. I've always found it's fine. It's worked fine for the last year for other people, but I've just added this in version 3.9, I think, uh, and it's really handy. If there's nothing to show, it won't show the module. So you're not using extra spacing or anything like that unnecessarily. I'll put that above. There we go. So a quite a basic layout really, but just for the sake of an example, video woo single. Save the layout. And then pop on over to the um, to the settings page. There we go. We'll scroll down to product page layout. It's a bit slow to load because my battery is dying at the minute, so it's not a slow website. Um, product page layout is the one we're doing video woo single. There we go. And if I press save settings, it'll save it. There we go. Now there's a handy button there to edit that. So I can click that and it'll open a new tab that'll take me straight to the layout to edit it. So over time, you will find that you develop quite a few different layouts. Um, and um, it, uh, it, it's just easy to get to in this way. Right, the next, now we can go and refresh this page, and because it's using the product page layout, we've now lost the sidebar, we've got our breadcrumb at the top, we've got quite a pretty grid there, we have our own hover zoom system, we can click on the various different thing, um, images and have them replaced out, and then the zoom also works on these as well. We have our variations that work in exactly the same way. Text, title, and all the other information you need to know. Um, if I add something to the cart, you should see it appear just across here in the middle. So if I add to cart now, and then you'll see that the, this is the notices module, and that appears quite nicely at the top of the page. Otherwise, it would be full width, and it would, be, it would start at the far side by this line here, and work its way across. It works fine, actually, but if you like it a bit smaller, then use that option. Now, the header cart, as you can probably see in the header here, I've got a picture of a cart and number five. That means I've got five items in my cart. I hover over it, and you should be able to see here that I've got, there's my five items. Now, I'll change a bit of CSS around this here. This is actually because I've got a variable product in the cart, and I haven't uh, reduced the spacing down, but ultimately it works fine. Um, you can then click to view cart or go straight to checkout uh, or you can click on the product pages individually or you can remove your items as well. So it's quite versatile really. Nice little feature for zero configuration necessary, just check a box. 
So we can go straight to the cart, or you can click the cart icon, it takes you to the cart itself. The cart is still the same, you'll notice, so let's go and change that, shall we? So, I have actually created already, again, for the sake of a convenient video here, um, I've made a cart. So we'll say here, cart when at least one product's in the cart, so let's do basket, and now we'll do basket empty. So you don't need to create the empty one. If you don't create it, it will just fall back to the there are no products in your cart button. Um, in this case, let's press save. Now the cart in this case, um, I've already been in and I've pressed use the Divi Builder on the short code. If you don't do this, you'll see the sidebar and your content will, will appear in the middle quite small. So if I just say um, use default editor, your cart page typically on a new install will look like this. WooCommerce cart as a short code with no Divi Builder. All you have to do is press use the Divi Builder and it will put that short code inside one, um, inside one text module. You can then save it. That's all. Nothing else necessary for this page at all. It's largely ignored, but it does decide how it's going to look. Now, as you can probably tell, I've saved that page, I've created my basket layout here, and if you remember from a moment ago, the cart layout was a cart table across full width with the totals below. And as you can see here, um, I've been playing with the options here. I've turned off the coupon system down here, which is an option in that module, and we've got some, um, some styling on the boxes. This is, I'll show you this layout now actually, because it is just a very basic layout. So if I go back to my page, and I click on click to edit basket, what you'll see is a normal Divi Builder layout, which I'll go through. Here we go. And uh, that's just a text-based title. Your basket, there you go. I didn't add the Woo Notices module on here, that would be a good idea to put that above the cart products. Um, we have Woo cart products and Woo cart totals. So they translate to the table is the products and the totals is, well, the totals. Let's click into them. Sometimes you get the spinny wheel, you just have to refresh the page again. That's a divvy thing. Um, but there you go, it does happen. And we have the option to, to remove the featured image, product links, coupon form. So here, there's no image, there's, these are links, and there's no coupon form below. If I turn them all back on, like this, I should add as well that in the design tab, I've added some padding, I think 30 pixels in this case, probably. There you go, 30 pixels. And I have um, added some box shadow, this one here. And that's all. I think I need a white background as well and a grey background on the on the section. Same with cart totals. Cart totals doesn't have any options other than title, um, but I didn't really think you need any for now. I will add some in the future. So when we've saved this, and we can go back to the other page. Here we go. It's still loading in the background. I can see it now. It's now it's loaded. If I refresh, it's loading. Ah, oh, it hasn't loaded properly. Never mind. I'll fix that. So, what it will do anyway, <laughs> when it saves correctly, is it will show you those items again. Um, in this case, it didn't. Wonder why. Try it again, shall we? Save and update. Not sure what happened there. I think my laptop had a moment, but let's just confirm this is working. If not, I shall fix it. Have they saved? Yes. Okay, here we go. And it's working. Now this is a one take video. I'm not going to do that again. You saw that it didn't save properly the first time. But again, that's probably a Divi thing. Uh, and you see now that these are links. The coupon form is there and the uh, thumbnails are there. And um, it works a treat. So let us proceed to checkout. Let's have a look at that. Checkout by default is pretty dull, two columns, two tables at the bottom. If I go back into my settings page here, we'll scroll to the bottom where you find the checkout page layout. Bear in mind I've made all of these so you'll have to make your own. 
um, and I'll, I'm showing you as I go, but they are quite straightforward. The checkout layout that I created on my local test install. If you'd like me to upload the JSON somewhere, let me know and I will do, but they are very basic. This is just for testing purposes, really. There you go, it's saved fine on mine. And now if I refresh this page, you should get something a bit more visually appealing. There we go. So what I've done on this one is created a three column layout with the fourth column below. I actually did like the four column layout that I've posted on the product description. Uh, I prefer that quite a bit. You do have to adjust the width of the column mode to make it fit in unless you aren't using shipping desk details, in which case you can just have three steps across here. Now, your details are there. Shipping address works fine. I've added these step one, step two, and step three um, <clears throat> labels already, uh, so you can not have them if you don't want them. Um, review your order has a coupon code option there. So rather than having a coupon field above, I've actually included it as a link. It does have its own unique CSS class, so you can style accordingly. If I click to, click to enter your code, it reveals the coupon field at the bottom of the page and um, scrolls you down to the bottom of the page as well. So it is there. Now, I that the styling of that is fixed just because this is the first um, pass on this uh, functionality and it looks quite well. Um, I'll add title and styling functionality later, but for all intents and purposes, it works. Um, and proceeding to checkout and PayPal works in exactly the same way as normal. If I go back to my layout and click on click to edit checkout layout, what you'll see is my Divi Builder layout. Now I should add that none of these modules work in the Visual Builder, only the Divi Builder. I prefer it anyway, even though it does say use the Visual Builder, um, custom modules from any third-party developer aren't yet supported. So, uh, I mean, it's 15th of November 2017. By the time that you watch this, it might be early 2018. It might well be changed. So keep an eye on the change log. Version 4 is the current version. So as you can see on this one, I've added uh, a standard heading. I've called it heading, but it's just a text module there as an H1 or H2. These are uh, have some basic settings in. Removing the company field, for instance, uh, was the one that I added in there with a title. Shipping is the same. Order review, I don't think there's any options other than title. There we go. And then payment, exactly the same. So to create a slightly different layout, let's go to four columns. And we'll move checkout payment up there. If I can. There we go. Wasn't that with that, was it? And what I did in the to make, make it a bit wider was to go to row module design and choose custom width, I think 80%. There we go, that worked. So if I save that, here we go. So when I've saved the page, let's hope it has saved, yes it has. Go back to checkout and refresh, immediately you'll be able to see it working in four columns. And there you go, that's all automatic. Now this works in the same way as the basket. You do first have to go to your checkout page and click on use the Divi Builder. If you don't, then well I'll show you what happens, just so you know. It's not quite as pretty, it will most likely break. Although, if you wanted a, uh, a configurable layout with the sidebar and everything else, I suppose there could be a, a place for it. Um, so it's not a bug, it just use it however you like. So if I've taken off the Divi Build on the checkout page. Let's go and have a look at what, what it looks like now. Okay, it's been a bit slow. Only 17% battery, it's falling fast. That's video recording for you. There you go. So what you're seeing is the normal page layout and you're seeing a Divi Builder layout within it. Now, what you could do is reduce the padding left and right, have two per column, two per row, um, and that would, also, that would actually work quite well but um, the intention is that you go into edit page and click use the Divi Builder. If not, you get a layout within a layout. Speaking of which, I will go on to the loop layout functionality shortly. Let me show you my account. So checkout editing was the version four feature. There we go, just put that back. Okay, so back onto my um, Wooly Layouts Injector settings page. 
Now I have a My Account page layout. I'll activate that straight away because uh, as you can see I've got one, two, three, four, five, six different layouts for account. Now they aren't all necessary. You only need the one or the two. Account Home and Account Nav, they're just labels. Doesn't matter what you call them. Uh, they're just what I've called them for clarity really. Uh, and let's go and edit it straight away. Let's close a couple of these tabs out of the way. There we go. If I go and have a look at Account Home, so this is the master layout that, that generates the overall layout for that page. Now in this case, I've added a My Account text module at the top. I've added an Account Navigation module to the right, an Account Page uh, module, which is sort of a container for the meat of the page, if you will, on the left, uh, and a couple of other just random examples of content just for so I can show you that it can do anything else. So if I go and have a look at the My Account page at the same time, there we go. I've gone with this grey background border shadow theme just because it's convenient and I'm not a designer. You guys are the designers, I'm a programmer so this is just basic, okay? So you've got a basic gradient header and these are your two modules. So your account nav is there, everything's configurable from within the design settings and you can click through these and it will show you uh, the content on the left. This is the account page module, is it account page? Yeah, Woo account page. And the content of that would change based on what you select here. My URL, URL at the moment is my account, but if I click on orders, it goes to my account forward slash orders. This is the account page module and it still shows me um, that the styling is inherited from the account page module but what it's shown me is the content from the account page layout. I'll show you that again shortly. It's a bit fiddly the My Account section, but it does mean it's very, very versatile for when you actually want to uh, start making these do a bit more, putting some top and tailing text in, adding titles and things. So if I click into one of my orders here, what I should see is, there we go. So it works in the same layout, same page. This is standard WooCommerce. Um, and it's that is the account page module, and it's it's it styles your receipt pages for you as well. So that, that's just two modules in use: account page, account navigation. If I click into the account page module, however, you'll see a title option, and that says account home. You'll see that above just here. If I go to dashboard, there we go. Account home. That's configurable. The content isn't configurable because actually this is standard WooCommerce. I will I will change it in the future though. And then you've got these four options for the different layouts that you can use. Now they're all layout drop downs. And this is why I've created these account home details, downloads, orders, addresses. Because you've got orders, downloads, addresses, and account details. Now you might want one of them to be especially styled. If you're running a download based website, you might want the downloads um, page to be particularly pretty. Um, it's always going to appear within this account page box, but the account nav could be above, below, this could be full width, it could be anywhere really, which is why they're in separate modules. So if you go and have a look at the downloads layout here, so I click on downloads here, so you can see a before picture. There you go, downloads. And if I go and have a look here, and I give you the account downloads option. Now this is just a um, a layout which contains the same code in fact so all we're doing is wrapping it in the ability to style it and add other functionality to it now again it's quite basic for this version if I refresh it what's going to happen is you'll just see a bit more spacing I think here we go there we go so my download shows you get spacing above and below the reason for this is because when you create a new Divi Builder layout you get a section which has a row inside it which then has a module inside that. Sections have default padding top and bottom and rows also have default padding top and bottom which is why you get the spacing. If you want to avoid that in the layout that controls the bit in the middle the downloads account downloads layout that I've created here here we go account downloads you would set you would edit the section and the row in that particular layout 
and set the top and bottom padding and or margin to zero and it will get rid of that spacing altogether. Um, the joy of using a layout, of course, is because you can add multiple rows, multiple columns. So if this was full width, you can have two thirds of downloads, but with one third maybe containing a bit of a write-up, some helpful links, anything you wanted. And in fact, I'll do that now just to show you. So um, we're, I'm going to show you the rest because they all do the same job. Let's go into account downloads. So we can abandon this layout for now. And there's your cat picture and the text that I've got below. And there you go, just to show you that they're, they can always be there if you want. Having cat pictures on your site isn't obligatory, just so you know. <clears throat> so in the Divi library, we're going to look for the Woo Downloads layout, which is here. And it should just be a single module. Where are we? There we go. But it doesn't have any configuration options apart from the title, but you can design it and adjust the colors and things. Uh, I wouldn't just yet though. Um, and let's say we wanted to add a bit of information at the bottom. So we're going to add a text module perhaps, and I'll grab some lips and here we go. And I'll put that in. And let's say I want it above as well. And save that out, so put it above. And I want to get rid of all that spacing, so I go into the section module, and I scroll to the bottom. What well, what used to be at the bottom? There we go. Top padding zero, bottom padding zero. Save, and on the row as well, same deal. Design tab. You go into you find the custom padding. Top zero, bottom zero. Save, and update. That's right, the battery's on ten percent. I'm going to relocate while that's saving. Here we go. And now, if I go and have a look at the, oh, there we go. I need power, power desperately. Here we go. I can refresh that, and I hope what I see. There you go. So the additional padding is gone. Um, above and below, it looks like it belongs there. The table is sat nicely in the middle, with its title. But that could be images. It could be download links of your own. It could be short codes for other plugins. It could be anything really. And it fits in. So if I click on orders now, because I haven't selected an orders layout from within the account page module, it just uses the default, puts the default content into the account page container. So you're not required to create six different layouts for the account page section. At the very least, create one account nav layout so you can style it. Or you sorry, one one layout, which is the account page layout, you use two modules, account nav and account page. Everything else is entirely optional, and there you have it. Now, if we go in and create our own archive now, so I click on Shop. This is the default archive. Bit dull. You've got a sidebar, which we don't want, and you've got a bunch of other stuff here, which I'm not interested in. So I'm actually going to go and create this from scratch, because um, I need to explain how the loop layout, or the loop archive, as I call it, modules work. So we go to our Divi library. and we create a new layout. I'm going to do that here by add new and I'll create one called woo archive video woo archive as a layout and save or submit. Now let's work on the assumption we do want a sidebar but as the sidebar is on the right let's put our sidebar on the left. So we'll go with one third, two thirds. You'd use the sidebar, standard sidebar module, and you choose the just any sidebar you wanted to really. You can create your own from within Divi. There's also the option to remove the line border separator here in the design settings. That's all standard Divi. Then in the right hand side, we need to add a layout called the Woo Loop Archive. Here you go, Woo Loop Archive. Now I can tell what it's done right now is it's <laughs> giving me this spinning wheel of death. That's fine, it does happen from now and again. Again, a Divi thing, it's a memory overload problem. Just refresh the layout, it should be fine. You will have to add the sidebar again, but that's no big deal. I'll actually just try and add the loop archive here. Here you go. I think it's because my battery is so low it's running out of memory. These are the settings here from within the module. First thing you have to select is a loop layout. Now if you imagine that our grid of four here, 
the loop, the um, the whole page is the layout that I'm creating. But the the ha you have four here, four products showing. Now in our loop archive module, um, it's going to get down to here and it's going to process the products one at a time. And each time it hits a product, it's going to apply a layout to it that I'm calling a loop item. So you create a separate Divi Builder layout, adding whichever modules you want, so in this case, product image, title, price, and rating in there, this one, um, and save that out as a layout. And then you go and add your archive where you can, um, uh, where you just select it in the loop item option. So loop layout here. Um, I did actually create one previously called Woo Loop Item, and I'll show you that in a minute, but you need to create that first, if not, it won't be in this list. The layout, I've chosen list, but I should choose grid because that's a bit more fun, and I'll choose three columns. That goes up to four, I will add more in the future. Pagination, that is uh, next and previous buttons, um, but actually the WP Page Navi plugin is free and very, very popular. Install that, and then doing nothing else would, would turn those next and previous buttons into um, proper paginated links, you know, one, two, three, four, five, etc. Um, I didn't see the point in adding it to this plugin, it already existed, so yes or no um, if you want it or not. Custom query is if you're adding this loop archive. Let's say you have a home page and you wanted to show the most recent three products on the home page. You could say custom query three posts, um, order by date, descending. And that's it, highly no results if you wanted to, that could be more if you're doing featured. Um, and that's it, you don't have to do anything else. In this case, I don't want the custom query. If you say no, this loop archive module must be added to one of the Woo default pages, your shop page, your category layout, your tag layout. If you try and add it to any other page, it will break. Um, or it won't show anything, probably more accurately, it won't blow your site up or anything. Uh, but it's designed for use uh, if you're going outside of the Woo sort of ecosystem, you have to have custom query on and you have to tell it what you want to see, otherwise it won't know. Hide of no results is a case of um, if you're saying that you want um, featured products only and there are no featured products, it would, rather than showing a we have no products label or a banner, it would actually show a um, it would show nothing instead, so it sort of elegantly falls back. But in this case, we're designing it for the shop and the category pages. And in fact, I will show you a category page in a second as well before I activate this. So we're going to add the sidebar again there, and I will add the uh, turn off the border separator. So we have quite a basic layout there. Whilst that's updating, I'll go to a different tab, and let's go and have a look here. Products categories. No, wrong one. Categories is there. We have test one and there are two products in it. If I press view here, not a good example because that's all. Oh, actually two, two products. There we go. So this is a category archive page. It looks the same. The URL that you can't see is product hyphen category slash test one. Test one being the name of the category. Now you can do things like bring in the category description, have a category title at the top, um, you might want it, well, you just don't want it to look like this, this is rubbish, isn't it? So um, it's just another archive page. And again, put in the Lu, uh, Lu? Wu loop item uh, loop archive module on this page um, will automatically show you the products that you're seeing here, these two, because the page knows that you're looking at an archive. If you were to, see, uh, to put that on another page with no WooCommerce context, like, a, like an About Us page or a home page, you'd need to use the custom query button or option there. And if you have a look at our knowledge base, um, there are other videos there showing, admittedly older ones, but it's all the same system, um, showing you how they work. So that's the category page. In fact, I'll leave that open. So our layout here is Video Woo, Ar Woo Archive. I'm not adding anything else. In fact, no, I will. I'll add a, a title. There we go. I'll just call it shop or something. No, I'll use the sh woo shop slash category title um, module and I'll say show description yes. Although we don't have any actually added to this test site, but there they go. So we have a category title across the top, sidebar and archive. I'll go ahead and add a gradient again, just as it's something to do. 
and that'll do me for now. I think text color light. Let's change it to light, and we'll center it. Oops, that's right. There we go, and update. Now we need to go and assign this now to our archive pages. So if I go to my here we go, the Woo Layout Injector Settings, and save. Just try to refresh the page so I've got the more layouts on there. And I scroll down to um, Archive, which is just here. I can say Shop Page is Video Woo Archive. The category archives are the same as are the tag archives. I don't have to do anything else. In fact, every single one has a setting now hasn't taken us long. In fact, I've been describing as I've been going and it's, it's working well, isn't it? So I can press save now. Now, this is our category archive layout. I'm going to refresh this now. And what you're going to see, I hope, fingers crossed, there you go, is test one. We're going to see our product images, our title, and our price. Now, to make those show more information, we can edit the loop item. So, that is our category archive, so much better already. This sidebar can be edited using the widget system. In here, widgets on the left hand side. So if I click on shop now, again, should use the same layout, but you can use either one you want. Now, this is because <laughs> actually I've used the, um, the uh, category title module when actually I shouldn't have used it. I should have used the um, um, use a text module saying shop easy enough to get rid of all I have to do is ditch that <laughs> that's only for use on category archive pages so it's been quite a while since I did a, uh, a walkthrough I think the last walkthrough I did was version 3 which was about nine months ago so we're going to say shop as an h1 and we can center it here using these settings or text color light and I think in here but what I will do for version 4.1 is ditch that error because that's not very nice to see is it now what you're gonna say now is well hang on it's now gonna say shop at the top of my archive page you're right um, you would probably want to create two layouts um, or um, just not have the title up there but again by the time that uh, you come to use it, I'll see if I can refine it so it's only one layout that's necessary. But the point is, um, you can create multiple different distinct layouts. So the shop page, for instance, could contain um, a big featured product link at the top and some other information, whereas the category links perhaps would contain different information. So this that's, that's our store, that's everything there. Now, a couple of things we don't see. Um, let's have a look at some overlays. Um, and let's have a look at some more uh, modules here like add to car or read more so I'll go into edit our loop archive let's change the number of columns let's make it two there we go that's fun isn't it that give me a nice grid of four just loading that and I can refresh that now there we go refreshing there we go, grid of four looks a bit better already. This is only for a store that's got four products. If you've got 400, then obviously do it differently. Let's have a look at how list view works. Grid can be list. This isn't quite so visually appealing, although it does depend on the, what you like. Um, I will actually show you the standard Woo archive module in a minute as well. This other one I've created. So there we go, I can refresh this page now, we're in list view, let's have a look, there you go, full width images, which are still loading, and everything information below. Although, bear in mind, this is fun, when you want to create a list, or in fact any layout, because we're using our loop item system, woo loop item is an NVAR loop layout, we can go into the Divi library, you'll like this, this is why it's so good to use multiple layouts and look for woo loop item here, what I created before I made the video and what you should see is a single column with three modules product image, title and price what happens if I make this 50-50 like so and I move the title and the price over here 
because this is a layout in its own right, so you can give it multiple columns and it will work, which is why this is so versatile. Your single, uh, each grid item can be multiple columns, each list item can be multiple columns. It really will do whatever you want. Bear in mind, every single module, row, section, um, from the parent or the loop item layouts all have their own styling options. So you really can go nuts and really personalize this. Um, let's have a look. And I wanted to add some content. So if I say woo content here, and I'll say excerpt only, I want the short one. There is a Woo short description or short content module you can use instead if you don't want to have to click that little button there. That's up to you. And there's a Woo add to cart down here as well. Woo add to cart. Oh, that's having a moment. That's a shame. It's this low memory thing that's going on in my computer right now. That's frustrating. Let's make it again. That only take us take me a second. Here we go. Right. We're going to go 50 50. Title, price. Let's do this in double quick time, shall we? Content. Oh, add to cart. This is again. There you go. Add to cart loads this time. That's fine. And woo content. Get my fan going. And excerpt only. And save. Right. Okay. So now we have our list view, what we have is a two column layout within each list item. So when that's loaded, what you should see now, as this is a single column, we're going to want an image with some information next to it. And this should just work. <laughs> I keep saying should. This will just work. There you go. So that's already a list view, quite impressive, store. Now if I change that to slightly narrower, one third, two thirds. There you go, the image gets smaller, the text gets bigger. Now, that will take everywhere this sub layout is used, this loop item layout is used, that will change. So if I wanted to add um, that to my category page, which I have done, they now take effect as well. So I'm changing one place, Divi Library, and everywhere that's used is changing at the same time. No time delay or anything like that. There we go. As you can see, that should be that can be put in a box, um, you can adjust the font, style, sizes, and really go nuts with it. So that's, that's actually quite pretty. So I really do want people to use this loop item system. However, I do have a more basic module here we can use instead if you prefer not to uh, go through all this hassle. And if you just want a basic store. So if I go back to my Divi library and I find my Woo Video Woo archive here, and I delete the loop archive, woo loop archive, delete that, and instead add the woo archive. Sounds similar, woo archive basic, I'll put basic there just to kind of help people out. This is going to have a moment, annoyingly, there we go. So I'm just going to refresh the page again. I'll have to have to fix this, it's one of the caching problems on the site. <coughs> Here we go, Woo Loop Archive is going, and Woo Archive is coming in. Basic, there we go. I'm going to have a grid. I'm going to have three per grid. Let's show, no, let's show two per grid. Uh, we're going to show the excerpt and a read more button. And I've got various different options here. Custom query again. You know how to use that now. And that's all the settings you get. I've not been too generous this time. Although I will edit this for future use, um, just not right now. Uh, this is a brand new module for version 4. Uh, it is very similar to the shop module, uh, except that uh, it's, it's just a design as a sort of a no-frills layout for the archives. So, there you go, that's what you get out the box. Um, you get your picture with an overlay, basic overlay, you don't get a choice in that, but you can choose the colour. Um, that's what it comes like. Um, titles, prices, ratings, um, with its own sort of individual styling. You can style the colours uh, and the sizes of the text um, where the shirt and certain items here show. So we can do things like we can remove the uh, excerpt there and we can get rid of the read more for instance. So I save that and update. 
because <coughs> not often you really want much content on the archive page, you just want a product, image, price, title, maybe a read more button or, or an add to cart. And this does allow you to do that. There you go. So each of these products here has got its own little page. So we can click into product one again. And there we go, we've got all our information here ready. Now, what happens if we wanted to showcase product one somewhere else on the site using the loop archive system? So let's go to page A. This is just test data from WordPress.org. This is a normal, non sort of unadulterated page. If I edit this page, convert it to use the page builder, and then tell it I'd like to use the Woo single item module, assume it doesn't go haywire again, it'd be in that spinning wheel, which it may well do, but then who cares. Here we go, we have a Woo single item, single product module. And it worked, fantastic. So this can be called product ah, one showcase. I choose a product from the list. I don't want to use a loop layout on this occasion. I just want a basic layout. But if I do want to use it, there we go. It says, what do I want it to use? And it just gives me the option. So I'll say, no, thanks. I'm all right. Price, add to cart images, or yes, product title. Yes, read more. Yes, Let's see, we've got quite a few here. Read more label as well. So, and we can now, let's make this 50-50 because that's a bit more fun, isn't it? There you go. I do like 50-50. <clears throat> Wait for this to load. Now this is not a Woo page. I can imagine 40 minutes into this video, this is where I get a big fatal error showing on the screen. But if it does, then <laughs> fingers crossed. Okay, that worked. Fantastic. Now, what you get is this is the non-Woo layout, uh, sorry, the non-loop item layout. So this could be a page of content, it could be a blog post, it could be anything. You want to showcase a product. You've got all the buttons here that work on the same page. Everything works. It's not pretty in this case because it's default, but it does work. Uh, and then that links through to the product if you want to accordingly. Now, let's go back and we'll edit it and we'll tell it to use the loop item. Again, the loop item uh, layout shines through here because we can we have a, another layout which we've just modified to be um, two columns or one third, two third, whatever it was. Loop layout, yes, and we want to use woo. Uh, where was it? Single module loop item I created previously to the video, but I think I've got woo loop item further down. I have to do nothing else because I've already created it for the product pages, but obviously you can create your own anytime you like. Go ahead and create it, and I'm just waiting. And now I'm thinking, I really hope this is still recording. There we go, and I can view that now. Let's see what happens. There you go. So you've got the same layout as before, but on a slightly smaller scale. Um, we have a one-third, two-thirds layout, um, and it's showing inside there. If I edit that and put that below, what's that? Oh, that's the error from earlier. That wasn't this one. <laughs> Thank God. Um, where am I? Got too many tabs open. There we go. Edit this one. Now, if I edit this to a one third, two thirds, or something similar, right? So let's have a look. Let's make it one third, two thirds. Now I have one third, two third, one third, two third next to each other. It should spread out a little bit. Okay. Just wait for this. There we go, and I can view that. Whilst that's loading, I need to check if I've got anything else I haven't gone over. Change log, there we go. So version four, fix, 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 fix. Rating module, refactored. Sale banners, I haven't showed you the sale banners yet, have I? And I think that is it. There we go, right. So there you go, slightly larger, a bit prettier, but all the styling options will come through. So you can adjust them from within the loop item layout. So you can put your board around it or do whatever you want. Entirely up to you. Now, sale banners. I did have, I think, in my shop, a product that was on sale. I think it was product one. Hmm, no. Let's go and put product one on sale. Oh, that's what I haven't showed you. Uh, the Divi Builder layout for a product. So if I say add new 
product, here we go, let's just do it this, brand new product, and we'll say video product, spelled correctly, we'll say user Divi Builder, and we'll do that in a minute in case he does the spinning wheel of death. I'll just add some information in. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, six, seven. There you go. Good price. And I'll add an image. Now we have this woo layout injected box down the side here. This is uh, the original method of overriding a single product. So if you had a single product layout all set centrally, but you wanted a specific product to use a different layout, um, you could build the layout in the Divi library and then choose it from the list there. Now that still has its own sort of charm in a way because if you wanted to include let's say you wanted a um, a feature product layout you could create that in Divi library and then on the products that you really wanted to feature you know flagship product from each category or something you would choose from the let drop down here and pick the one you wanted to now we also have the use the Divi builder button up here which allows us to design products directly now that's obviously only good for this one product if I wanted another product, I'd have to go and do it all over again. Yes, I could load from the library, save from the library, but as soon as I edited one, I'm screwed because I've then got to go and edit every single product. So I actually still prefer the original method, the previous um, created in the Divi library because then it's centrally managed, but I can see the benefit of doing it this way. Um, so let's, actually I'll leave that for now. Uh, let's go and add an image. Here we go. And there's... There's a product image. EDD layout injector, that's coming soon. And there's some product gallery stuff down there. Let's grab some Lipsum. There we go. And further up the page, I'll just publish this. Now, the reason I did that was because I didn't particularly want to, <laughs> didn't particularly want to have to redo it all again if the Divi Builder broke on me. But if I put a slightly cheaper price in here, one, two, three, sale price 50, and then I'll just go and make a nice basic layout, product image on the right hand side, so it's in a different place to last time, where are we, product, only problem with having so many modules is you can't work out where they are, hide thumbnails, yes, and we'll choose it as a large image, and we'll leave the rest as standard, we want the title, there we go, and let's have the... Now the content obviously won't work because the content I'm editing right now. So you have to use the short content, or if you do use the content, it will automatically use the short content for you. So pretty idiot proof in that respect. Next we want to choose the Woo Add to Cart module, which is up here. Don't break. That didn't break, fantastic. And then finally the Woo Price module. Here we go, wood price. Ah, good. Good, 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 didn't break. Now, we have selected in our settings, let's go and see if we've got them open here. Here we go, sale badges. Sale badge location, single product pages, is over the product description. Now, the product description in this case is, um, uh, won't really work, because we want a Divi Builder layout. So we'll choose it as product image for both. Okay, and we'll leave it as, we'll create slightly, ah, Slightly cheaper. See, I've made this bad joke before. And now what I can do is kill that layout, go and view the product. Now what we've got is a Divi Builder based product with the sales stuff kicking in automatically down here, but with also slightly cheaper showing over the image at the top. The orange is not configurable as of yet, but it will be through CSS. It's got its own CSS class. Uh, it's just it's standard for WooCommerce for it to be orange. The hover zoom works as you can see with it over the top. If I now go to the shop, you should see slightly cheaper overlaid on the product as well. Uh -huh. We need to choose a. We need to go and make sure that that's on the right page. So, um, where are we? So in our, I you know what, oh my mother. If I just go and put. Um, the archive needs pagination. Um, Divi library. And woo archive.
Now that, actually, no, that's why. This is the default, uh, the Woo archive basic. I need to use the loop archive for this to work. So if I delete that, it probably will give me the white screen of the spinny wheel of death, but let's have a look. Yeah, there we go. Just refresh. Don't even need to do anything with it, just refresh. And we'll load that again. There we go. Loop archive. And we can choose uh, Woo Loop item again, and we can say layout list is fine. There we go. Pagination, yes. And just hope it works. I'm sure it'll be fine. I've messed around with this test site quite a lot, but it is tried and tested, so don't worry about it too much. Right, and now refresh the shop. Two, three, four, older entries. There we go, there's your pagination. Not very pretty, but as soon as you have the WP page and have your plugin, it works fine. And there's our slightly cheaper overlay. And actually, that looks quite good, doesn't it? So, there we have it. Um, I think that's probably enough for this video. Um, we've got ourselves a, um, a complete walkthrough of the Woo Injector plugin, version 4 compatible onwards. Uh, and a good beginner's guide for anybody who's interested. So uh, any questions, do put it in the comments um, on the Elegant Marketplace site. Although we do have a support system, it's sean-barton.co.uk forward slash support, where if you open up a support ticket, um, we'll get back to you um, within 24 hours and um, hopefully get it sorted out for you. I keep saying hopefully, we will get it sorted out for you. And um, you know we're always happy to to log into people's sites and to fix things directly, so that you're not having to sort of ask questions backwards and forwards. Lots of layouts to make, but it does work itself out quite quickly um, when you get the hang of it. But uh, anyway, thank you very much for listening. Good luck.